Today on the table I have the Bushmaster A2 and the Troy Industries XM117 E2. So the scenario here is you've watched quite a few of my videos and you're like, hey, why would I buy an entry level AR-15 when usually for within $100, maybe $200 more, I can get a premium AR-15? What I mean by premium is it's got all the desired features you want out of an AR-15. Quality barrel, M16 bolt carrier, chrome line bolt carrier, etc, etc. So now, I know I want to get my premium AR-15, and for whatever reason you decide you want open sights, probably because you've watched a bunch of my videos, do I want to get something more user-friendly or something that's a little bit awesomer and will stand out? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of going with either rifle? Well, first things first, you will see a pretty substantial price split. The Troy Industries is about $327 more than the Bushmaster. The Troy Industries is a lighter firearm by almost a full pound. It is also shorter when it's completely collapsed in, but it can't go as long. Now the Troy Industries does use the old style flip sights. These do change your elevation. So if you were to zero on one peep and flip to the other, you're gonna have a totally different zero. What's that for? So let's say you zero one peep your close peep to 200 meters or yards. You can flip to the other one and now your point of aim, point of impact at a totally different range. It, I haven't tested it out personally, but like let's say on the Bushmaster, if I do this at 100 yards, this would be a 100 yard change within 300 meters. <clears throat> so basically why that matters, all right, so say you go to a gun range here and you're like, hey, where's your meter range? They're gonna be like, dude, you're in American gun range, standing on American gravel, shooting at American targets, made out of American wood. You're literally holding the dick of the free world. Why exactly would we have a range measured out in meters? So I don't actually, I haven't been able to find a spot where I can double check to make sure my 300 meters is zeroed. So this might be slightly different, but currently this rifle, so how it's gonna work, if you wanna shoot 300 meters, you'd be on the small peep and you'd be on the flat spot of your ranging wheel. Okay, so now what if you wanna shoot 200 yards? Again, I don't have meters, but this works for 200 yards. So if I wanna go 200 yards, I go to the big peep. Well, what about 100 yards? I would go big peep, bottomed out on my range wheel. Now, what if I wanna go 300 yards? Then I would go small peep, bottomed out on my range wheel. Now to go 300 meters, flat spot on my ranging wheel, small peep, and now the rest are marked out. 400 meters, five, six, seven, and then all the way, one full roll, one full revolution with the wheel would be 800 meters. Is the rifle really effective at that range? Probably not, but it is kind of cool always being point of aim, point of impact, just by adjusting stuff back here, and it's all marked out so it's repeatable. Now the Troy, you have to adjust your elevation with the front peep, or obviously by flipping the rear peep. This is cool because both peeps are a small peep. And for me, anyway, it's more dialed in on the small peep, so I'm more accurate with it. But the problem is, the different ranging peeps are exactly the same. So it'd be very possible to have it by mistake on the wrong peep and miss your target because now you're set at 100 yards or 100 meters difference. So if you do get this, it's gonna be very important to like paint one of the peeps or something. So when you look at it, like, okay, I know what peep that is because it's red or it's blue or something like that. So then you can make sure you're on the right peep. Now with the Bushmaster, because both peeps are the are not the exact same size, if you're on, say, the 200 meter peep, you pull it up, you know instantly, because it's the big peep. If you're on the 300 meter peep, as soon as it touches your cheek, you know what peep you're on. So that is kind of important. Both do have carrying handles, I like that a lot. Now, the Bushmaster does have a six position rear stock, so you can dial this in for your exact arm length. Like for me, right there. That's where my stocks always sit at. It's 12 and a quarter inches for a length of pull, which is my length of pull. It feels great. 
The Troy only has a two position stock. This is an aluminum stock. You got in and out. Neither of these are my size, but I am able to hold these comfortably. Well, I shouldn't say comfortably. I am able to hold these and be able to use them. Like I could totally use that just fine. And I could totally use that just fine. <sighs> now, because of the NFA, the Troy does have a pretty big disadvantage. This is permanently fixed, because if it wasn't, you would have to get a tax stamp for this rifle, because it would be an SBR. Where that becomes an issue is, say something happened, like say you broke off an ear of this front gas block. You can't take this off, not without removing the pin out of this, which is welded in. So you could take it off, but it's going to look terrible because you're going to have a grind mark, and there's going to be finish messed up, and then you got to put a new one on. Normally that wouldn't be a problem because you just send it back to the manufacturer and have them do it, or if it's under warranty, it would be covered under warranty. Right now, Troy Industries is the king of the worst firearm warranties, uh, I shouldn't say warranty because I didn't try their warranty, but customer service I have ever dealt with. If you want to hear the long drawn out story, go to my first video. Uh, there'll be a little link right here. But basically, if I were to buy this rifle, I would pretend that customer service doesn't exist. So if anything broke, I'd be replacing it myself. I've dealt with Bushmaster's customer service. It's, it's a ways from good, like the response time and how I'm able to actually talk to someone. If it was on a sliding scale, Troy Industries being on one side, Mossberg and Ruger being on the other side, it'd be somewhere just below middle. I'd call it fair customer service. So that is something to be aware of. Now your Bushmaster, this uses your standard, just circle forward assist. This has a little drop down. I've only had to use a forward assist once. It was like negative 20 out, and I didn't really understand AR-15s. I was still under the stereotype that, oh my God, they had to be dripping wet and just packed full of lubrication to work because I didn't know any better. My evolution went from like shotguns, AKs, AR-10s, and then I finally got into AR-15s much later. My AR-10 was an armor light. <laughs> Can't talk today. My AR-10 was an Armalite A2 carbine, so that didn't even have a forward assist. So when I got into AR-15s, that was the first time I've ever dealt with a forward assist. And I just had a pack full of lubricant and grease, and it was like negative 20 out. I'd let the bolt go, go to like right here, and then just stop. So what I had to do is grab the stock with one hand, grab the forward grip with another hand, then there was a picnic table, and go like that, and hit the forward assist and slam it home. After I shot a couple of rounds, it obviously warmed up, not a problem. Now, the Troy, because you have this and there's so much leverage, you could run into issues with breaking this off, because using the forward assist, you're at a huge mechanical disadvantage, because your pressure is coming through like this, and your bolt's got to go like this. So almost all the force you put on here is wasted at an angle. So you have to apply a lot of force on that to be able to move the forward assist. So it's very possible to break that. Honestly, that's the only scenario I can ever think of where you'd actually use a forward assist because if your bolt's not going forward, there's a probably a problem. And if you do get it forward, you're probably just going to explode your rifle depending on what the problem is. Now, they do use different front sights. This has the new style. It's square. And this is the old style. It's round. I haven't shot the old style in an extremely long time, so I don't remember what it's like at range of which one I prefer. I'm assuming I'd prefer the square one because even when I post up, just you know, looking out the window, the edges of the front sight are kind of blurry, and I think that would affect my accuracy. Again, I don't know because I haven't shot one of those sights in so long. But now, like the Bushmaster, I can see the squared off edges. So I take the front post, if I'm shooting at something far away, I'd look at the two squared off edges, then I'd mentally divide that distance in half, and I can really dial in on my target. After I get some rounds through the Troy, because that's probably going to be coming a personal rifle, I'll give you an update and let you know what I think of it. 
Now, when you purchase the firearms, I totally forgot to bring, because this is my personal firearm. This is actually called the Harvester. As you can see right there, I already labeled it. But I totally forgot to bring the box to show what it comes with. But you're going to get a cardboard box. You're going to get one magazine, a Magpul mag. I actually got rid of it and got a stainless steel military surplus mag. At least that's what they said on it when they sold it to me. It doesn't actually have a name. It's just got a bunch of numbers and then Hartford, Connecticut. So I don't know who actually manufactures these. Because I just don't like the look of Magpul mags. Like this mag looks awesome. That's pretty cool. But anyway, you're going to get a Magpul mag. Some of the Bushmasters we had come through the shop came with a sling. Some did not. So... I don't know if that's something they were just phasing out or what the deal is with that. But anyway, you're going to get a Magpul mag, a cardboard box, a sticker, an owner's manual, and that's about it. With the Troy, you're going to get a 10-round magazine, which this thing is a pile of crap. It has an anti-tilt follower that tilts. Something is definitely out of spec in this. That may not be a problem to with you unless you really push your rifle hard, because where that would be an issue is say you got your ammo in there and it's not brand new super polished ammo anymore or somehow dirt or water or something gets in there your bolt comes forward goes to hit the round it gets stuck on the other round the whole thing tilts forward bullet takes a nosedive not cool that'll call it a malfunction so the magazines it's kind of like uh whatever does that really count i don't know that's your decision to make you're also going to get a 30 round magazine a retro cleaning kit. You're going to get a reprint of the M16. A Sweet 16 cleaning manual. It comes with a thank you letter. Like five stickers, which is crazy. <laughs> Owner's manual. Firearms data book. And you also get this style of sling that they used in Vietnam. This is actually where they attached it to. Apparently they took some used hardware, some sort of belt or something like that, put a little bit of paracord on there, called her good. So you do get a lot of extras with the Troy and that helps soak up some of the price split. Now the receivers themselves are different in a few different ways. The major way that you have to decide yourself if you wanna deal with that or not is the Troy has a 90 in it, right? Right here. Anytime you're using a 90, that's a weak point. Your Bushmaster has a radius. This is a far stronger receiver. But the Troy, because that's a retro rifle and it's supposed to be a recreation of a rifle, that 90 is supposed to be there. Also on the back, uh, this is gonna be hard to show. I'll have to roll in photos. But the Bushmaster's got a lot of bit, a lot more meat on the back, giving this strength, giving this receiver a lot more strength on your buffer tube. So let's say you were to butt smash a communist, you're a lot less likely to break off the barrel extension, or not the barrel extension, the buttstock extension on the Bushmaster <clears throat> over the Troy. It's just how it's cut. So if you were to like start butt stomping someone with this it is likely you possibly could break this off. Would this break before the actual buffer tube? Probably not, but then it is something you want to be aware of. The next, the next big difference on the receivers the Bushmaster uses a low shelf low receiver. This is my favorite pattern. If you were to say be running like an A3 with some sort of optic on it, that's important because as the rifle ages, it'll start getting slop in the upper and lower. You can put an Aki wedge in there and tighten that up. The next reason, if we ever get stupid people out of office and we get the 86 band lifted, then I can drop an auto sear in here. The Troy. Does use a low shelf. But because this is an A2 setup, it's kind of a mute point. It doesn't really matter because if you get slot because you have two point of aims, who cares? You, you can tell. But it's got a divider right there. 
So, you could never put an auto sear in this. It just won't work. Triggers are exactly the same, just your standard GI. Now the biggest reason to go with the Troy is this is, it's retro looking. It's awesome, like this is what the Special Forces used in Vietnam, the MV SOG, I hope I'm saying that right. I'll roll in what it actually is right there. And it's pretty damn close. There is a couple of issues. Obviously, this isn't a real moderator because the ATF and all their wisdom decided that would be classified as a silencer. So in order to have that, this would be a two-stamp rifle because one, you'd have to be able to take that off so you can clean it. So you'd have an SBR plus another tax stamp on the moderator. The next biggest difference that I found anyway is the receiver's two different colors. The outside is the proper color, but on the inside it's just black, just like your Bushmaster. So that kind of sucks. Another huge problem is this has M4 feed ramps. These aren't supposed to have M4 feed ramps. This existed long before M4, M4 feed ramps existed. It's also got a 1.7 twist barrel, which is a very not desirable barrel twist. The reason that is is because there's more than just 77, 62, and 55 grain 5.56 and or 2.23. With the 1.7 twist that does allow you to stabilize tracer ammo. I don't know how much, how many of you guys want a line drawn to your shooting position, but I see no reason whatsoever for me as a civilian, other than maybe on like the 4th of July, which would be legal as hell, to have tracer ammunition. There's just no point. You don't want a line going to where you're standing. If you're actually engaging a force, that would be terrible. It's like, oh, hey, if I just follow that red line, he's right there. So for me, there's no reason whatsoever to run a 1.7 barrel twist for ammo stabilization purposes. But now, because there is a lot of like 36 grain environment ammo, stuff like that, that's on the shelf, if ever, if things were to ever fall apart and I was just scavenging up whatever the hell ammo I could get, I want the best chance that ammo is gonna be able to shoot out of my rifle. Well, the 1.7, now, it needs to be noted, this is a shorter barrel length, so it's not gonna have the velocity, so you're not gonna quite get the RPMs out of the ammunition. But say this was a 1.7, and I just shot standard soft jacket varmint ammo. I managed to scavenge out of Walmart. There's a very, very strong possibility that a couple of different things may happen. As soon as the barrel, as soon as the bullet leaves the barrel, because it's soft metal, you're looking at a very thin copper jacket and lead. The centrifugal force from spinning that fast can just make it disintegrate. Right in the middle of the air, poof. And if you were to shoot at the target, it'll look like it got hit with a shotgun blast at close range. Anything farther, you won't even see a, a hole in it. Or you can have a minor structural failure where it just bulges out on one side, throwing off the center of mass, and then the bullet just goes wherever the hell it wants to. So that is something to be aware of. The one nine barrel twist, which is Bushmaster has, is actually my new favorite twist rate. No matter what I was able to fit in this magazine, I was able to stabilize. Obviously, if it gets really cold out and the velocity lowers down, maybe I might have some problems with some longer ammunition. But I shot Hornady 80 grain, which that's the one with the little red ballistic tip on it. It wouldn't even fit in this magazine. I had to take fingernail clippers and clip that little red tip back a little bit to get it to fit. I shot that right before deer hunting. It was currently... When I shot it, I wish I would have recorded it, but it was like negative five or negative 10, and it still stabilizes it out to 300 yards. So I highly doubt this is ever gonna have an issue stabilizing whatever the hell I want to fit inside this magazine. If that was a one seven twist rate, the stuff it could stabilize would never even come close to fitting in this magazine. So all the advantages to go to a one seven are gone. Now where I stay back to a one nine, I can get to those lighter calibers. This rifle doesn't like 55 grain. I haven't tried 36 or 45 or 40 or any of those because I don't like 55. It likes 62 the best. But I still could shoot those. Even if they were on accurate, it would still be within a human sized silhouette. It's not gonna be like a barn silhouette and I'm still not even coming close. So sorry I kinda went on a rant for that, but I needed you to understand it. 
Another big difference between the Bushmaster and the Troy, this is a government profile. Now they do offer two different models of this. You could get the M4 profile, so you could put on a grenade launcher, which who really cares because we can only have 37 millimeter grenade launchers, which are not really good for anything except for looking cool. Or you got your government profile where it's this size all the way through. The Troy does use a pencil profile. I believe this is 0.65 inches around. I'll throw a caliper on it and correct myself if I'm wrong. And it is shorter, but both barrels do use 4150 steel. They also are chrome lined, which has military spec. So that's what I want. That's awesome. Other than that, there's really not uh, I mean, basically the two rifles aren't even close to the same thing, but other than that, those are the major differences you want to be concerned with. So, you want to go with a premium rifle. These are two options that have flown on your radar. Which one should you go with? They both do have some awesome advantages. Like I said, this is structurally more sound. You get the different ranging options, but it's heavier. This looks a hell of a lot cooler. It's got a retro look to it, but you're limited on the adjustability. You're limited on repairs you can do yourself. And it's quite a bit more expensive. -er. Expensive, -er. expensive ish, expensive. You guys can just correct me in the comments whatever word's supposed to be used. So, honestly, I can't make a decision. I mean, this would be awesome because it's lighter. I could carry this a lot farther without getting tired. But then you're also putting yourself at a liability because one, it's a barrel twist. Uh, the lower receiver, it's not as strong as the Bushmaster. I've never failed the lower receiver. I've never had a lower receiver fail except for the polymer ones. So would that really be an issue? Man, I don't know. I believe they changed it for a reason. You don't get the rear ranging, but honestly, like over 300 yards, if everything were to fall apart, I mean, engaging a target that far away, you're clearly running offense and something like that happens. I'm only going to run defense ex exact only when I have to. And even then I'm going to be trying to get away as quickly as possible. Also the Troy, you know, it's got that front sight. Would I change it out? No, God, no, I wouldn't change anything on that rifle. Just like the Norinco 97s. Because the original is so incredibly expensive, this will become a collector item. Unfortunately, they did originally make these with 112 until Guns and Ammo stuck their nose in there and got a whole bunch of people to request a different barrel length and the different M4 cutouts. This one will still be sought after, but everyone's really going to be going after the original one. That's where the money's going to be. The original 112 without the M4 feed ramps. Which... Kind of sucks because I can't get that one because they don't make it anymore. But anyway, so like collectability, yeah, without a doubt, the Troy. Usability, except for weight, the Bushmaster's kind of got the edge. So yeah, leave in the comments below which one you would pick and why. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.